Hey guys, thanks for checking out Quick Sessions. I'm Garrett Terrio coming to you from Houston, Texas, inside Timberline Fitness Studio. And today I was training one of my young guys, lacrosse player, and we're doing a lot of single leg stuff, a lot of unilateral stuff. And he was asking, why do you do such a thing? And it's not the first time a young athlete has asked me why I tend to go pretty heavy on unilateral movements. Now, it doesn't mean I don't do bilateral movements. I've just found in my time of working with young athletes, especially young athletes, older athletes suffer from this a little bit because we're all asymmetrical to an extent. But with young athletes, they've probably done everything using both feet or both hands because they've only had so much time in their life to work out. But in a nutshell, I talked with them for about 20, 30 minutes. So I'll give you the cliff notes. But any sport you play, he played lacrosse, for instance. He's going left to right a lot, right? He's spinning left, spinning right, jumping left, jumping right. And if you've ever played any sport, really, when you jump to the side, you're not using both feet. You're planting with one and going to the other side. And that in itself should be enough of, oh, I should definitely train both. But it doesn't come as such a common sense thing to everybody. And I'm not saying I'm the law as far as unilateral training but in sports when you do something like a squat let's start with the most basic important movement in sports you're using both legs and you can pile up on weight you can get strong you go through the full range of motions should be enough but one thing that athletes run into is that when you're so used to using both legs it's more than just legs right your glutes are combined and helping each other balance your core comes from both sides to help you balance and create pressure and strength and even your upper body is balanced in sports it's very rare that you are truly balanced right if you're an offensive lineman you know maybe there's more of the play where you're balanced compared to the next guy but let's say you're a running back and you have to find a hole you're never gonna be truly balanced until you fully turn up field and if you can ask any running back you know how easy is it to just turn up field and be perfectly square you know it doesn't happen on too many plays so the ability to explode off of one leg while maintaining balance is crucial. It's crucial for a running back. A baseball player is constantly going through planes of motion. Keeping the balance there is crucial. Golfers, it's cru- every sport, every single sport. Basketball, you're always jumping off one leg. It's very rare you're jumping off of two feet outside of when you're shooting a jump shot. But what it comes down to is this. Yes, when your entire body is aligned, it's working. Most of the time, it is not, though, so why not train in the weight room for situations that you will inevitably face on the court or on the field? Makes sense, right? So when it comes to unilateral training, it's more than just balancing on one foot or just shifting your weight one side or the other. You really have to work on the full range of motion when you're doing this unilateral training. Here's what I mean by that. When you're doing a squat, it's easy to go through the full range of motion, right? Ass to grass or quad parallel, hamstring, however you want to do it. But when you get to a single leg squat, all of a sudden you're not going down as far. You know, why is that? You're not trying to give half effort or anything like that, but your balance just isn't there. Your core is not either strong enough or balanced enough to have your hips aligned and create that strength you need to hold your body up. And that's where I get into working with athletes on single leg stuff, single arm stuff too, but that seems to come much more natural to young men and women than their lower body. So what do you do? How do you start training these single leg squats? Well, the TRX is probably the number one tool I use. Call them pistol squats, but they're just single leg squats. And it allows your upper body to assist you in getting that full range of motion and even greater than full range of motion at time. For instance, if you're doing a squat and you're going to parallel, that's great. But if you're doing single legs, I think it's absolutely crucial to go the full way because you have much more to learn in a short period of time. And not only that, you'll be learning to engage your single leg muscles at greater ranges of motion, which will allow you to engage them more efficiently with a shorter range of motion. I hope that makes sense. It's the same idea where always practice full range, and even if you never use it in the game, if you can be strong through the full range, then you definitely can be strong through a partial range, right? I've discussed it in past podcasts, and it's true in everything, right? If you are a golfer and you only practice in a range of 90 degrees because that's how much your hips open when you swing, that's fine, 
but why not practice through 110, then 90 is nothing. Then you don't have to worry about that as much. And just like anything else in sports, when there's something you don't have to worry about and it's instinctual and your body just performs it efficiently without any extra oomph from yourself, then you can focus on other aspects of your swing or your run or your step or whatever it is you're doing for sport. And since you're a lot of times needing to perform unilateral movements like we talked about earlier, it only makes sense that you need to have an even greater range of motion than you do with two legs or two arms. Now, as far as your everyday person, your average Joe, your adult who's not playing sports, just trying to live a normal life and stay healthy, what is the benefit of them performing unilateral exercises? Well, number one is the more balanced you can make each side of your body, the better it's going to work together. It's going to be more synergistic. It is going to help reduce injury. Your core strength will be higher because it has to be, right? Your whole core wants to work. It's not good at working with just one side or the other. And when you're un stable, doing something new, and your core has to work on something that in its mind is not balanced, it's going to go into overdrive and try to help. And this does things like prevent you from falling, or if, say, you're standing on one of those airport moving sidewalks, and all of a sudden it stops, you know, you'd be able to catch yourself better, regardless of what way you're leaning, right? If you have no unilateral strength, all of a sudden you're off balance, then you're falling. Uh, Going upstairs and you slip, you know, I'm just trying to think of random things in day-to-day life that can come up, but being able to balance on both sides and be strong on both sides helps prevent things like throwing out your back or, you know, emphasizing one hip or the other. As you get older, bones degenerate, hip problems become a thing. If you're strong on both sides and you can balance yourself, you're never going to be compensating on one side or the other. So that's a wrap. Some of my favorite unilateral stuff, I already talked about the pistol squat on the TRX, but Bulgarian squats, which are just a split squat with your back leg elevated. Lunges, obviously, can be very unilateral, and that's probably the most common exercise we do here at the gym. Uh, Foot inclined on a wedge for a lunge. Standard balance on a BOSU ball. I mean, there's tons of stuff you can figure out. You can single leg Romanian deadlifts. I could go on and on. But in summary, for anybody where you're the casual golfer or a high school athlete, every sport requires you to shift your weight and be balanced and strong on one side of your body or the other. The problem is a lot of programs and people don't train for that. They train the core and I think they're just missing so much in their development that could really help them in whatever sport or activity they're partaking in. So if you're listening to this, just give it a shot next time. Next time you're going in to do some squats, add some single leg split squats in there. Work on some single leg deadlifts, whatever it may be. Do a box jump on one leg. Whatever your favorite kind of movement is, just switch it to one side and you're not going to be as strong and it is going to be frustrating and your balance is going to be off and it's going to get you tired. But if you truly want to improve, going bilateral, while it will definitely help, it's not going to help for the shift that your body will go through when you're making an explosive movement during your activity or sport. Guys, hope that was helpful and gave you some ideas. Thanks for checking out the podcast. Catch you next time.